people who voted uh, UKIP in various yeah. elections are not, are they? I mean, you had a catastrophic result in the local council elections. 140 seats you were defending, all gone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's be... I'm not going to come on the show here and do a comical alley impression and say everything was great on the day. It wasn't. But we expected that we were going to have a bad result. Uh, we, we knew that they were going to be the most difficult local elections. Did you expect elections. to lose that many seats, though? Uh, we, we expected to lose a lot, because when we won them... But to be, uh, to, to be wiped out every seat you yeah, were trying yeah, to but, defend, you lost. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Look, we knew it was going to be a really difficult election, but it was made doubly difficult because the Prime Minister called a general election in the middle, and people went out and voted on national issues not local issues, and obviously what happened the day before the local elections, when she went out onto the steps of 10 Downing Street and had that fight with Jean-Claude Juncker, made it even more difficult. So, you know, I feel really sorry for the UKIP councillors who've worked really hard over the past four years, but I will say this, you know, UKIP's time will come again. You know, politics will come back onto our turf. Because people are asking, what, frankly, is the point of UKIP? Well, we be, we're the only party going into this election with clear policies to cut foreign aid, and reinvest that money into the National Health Service. We're the only party going into this uh, election with a clear equality agenda. We're the only party going into this election with clear commitments, real commitments, to, to cut immigration. We want to see immigration reduced to zero net over the next five years because we have a population problem in this country. You're saying that Labour have, have got an issue. Je uh, Jeremy Corbyn's already said that if, even if uh, Labour lose the election, he's going to stay on as leader. Uh, if you keep fail at this election, uh, will you stay on as leader? Of yeah, there'll be no pressure for me to resign as leader. So you, you'll stay on? Yeah, there's, there'll be no pressure whatsoever. What I is your measure of success at this election? I mean, for you personally, yeah. you're standing. Yeah. But if you fail, will you well, resign uh, as leader? What happens to me is, is irrelevant, actually. Uh, you know, what UKIP has to do is UKIP has to target sensibly in terms of financial resources and manpower, and hopefully we can get over the line in a number of seats. If you get no MPs, would you resign? Uh, look, I don't think that, that, that's going to be an issue because I'm quite confident. As I say, if we target in the right way, mm. we'll get over the line. And if you personally don't get elected, you would stay on? Yeah, that's irrelevant. It's a, look, what UKIP's got to do in this election is stay on the pitch, hold its nerve, because when Theresa May begins to backslide on Brexit, and she will, I think she's over-promising at the moment, and I think she's cooking up a lot of problems for herself in the future. When she begins to backslide on fisheries, freedom of movement... So you're hoping a new for a bill. bad deal, no, no, because no, that justifies no, the no, existence actually, of actually, UKIP. Actually, I don't want a bad deal. I want the best deal mm. for Britain, because I would always put my country over my so party. However, that. I have no trust in Theresa May on this issue. She campaigned to remain, and if you look at her record as Home Secretary, it's pretty dire. I don't trust her going into these negotiations. The irony of UKIP is that you've set out everything you wanted to achieve, and job's done. No, I mean, that's the not. opinion of lots of your high-profile members no, as well. It's not job done. In fact, it's half done, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, we were the people who forced the referendum. We were the people who went out and campaigned for Brexit. Mm -hmm. But these negotiations are going to start in September. And UKIP has to be there as the backbone, as the guard dogs of Brexit, to ensure that we get the kind of Brexit that people voted for on June the 20th. Yeah. I mean, you know, our survey this week, the Salvation Survey for Good Morning Britain, says the biggest change in how people will vote since 2015 is people who said they would vote UKIP. That number has fallen by 9% compared to how many people would have voted for you in the last general election. It is an, yep. an extraordinary irony. You know, you set out to get independence from the EU, you've got independence from the EU, but we haven't. and people think how fantastic. But we haven't yet. Well done, you so guys. But we haven't yet. Yeah, that's the point. So once that happens, and if Theresa May gets this deal, Brexit deal that you support, will you then turn around and say, do you know what? It is job done. UKIP no. is done now. We can set a step aside and let the government carry on governing. We don't need to be on No, the because there's other issues that we have to campaign on. We have to campaign on a foreign aid budget, which is costing the British people £30 million every single day. That should be reduced drastically, and we're the only people who are saying it. We have to campaign on the fact that a city the size of Newcastle is coming to this country every single year net. So UKIP will continue. Obviously, it will find other issues that it will campaign on in the future beyond Brexit. All right. Paul Nuttall, thanks very Thank much for coming in this morning, Paul. Cheers.